guess, and I'd like to just uh, thank you for joining us tonight as we discuss the current state of the economy and how we can make the best of things. Uh, this health crisis has been, you know, really dragging a lot of people down and we just want to, you know, invite some people and just talk about it and maybe everybody can gain some insight. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome our speakers. So thank you very much um, to the spe two speakers. The first one um, that I, will, I would like you to get to know is Jimmy. Jimmy Wu is an, uh, an IT professional. So he's already really successful just because he has an IT career at the right time, I think, right? And being smart enough to actually get through the courses. I'm sure that that was a grueling uh, state of studies for him. Um, and of course, he's also an investor and he's a very, very successful entrepreneur all on his own. But what really impressed me was that he started his business when he was only 25. And that's really, really young, at least in my books, he's very, very young. And even more admirable, Admirably, he's actually used his business and his knowledge to help so many others. Uh, and all those other people, many, many of them are actually very successful all as well. And he's also the co-founder of uh, the Double Six Group. And the other gentleman that we have joining us tonight is Ki Sun. He is another um, very successful young uh, professional. Um, he's very... Uh, successful in his own right because he's young and he's a director of a compensation in a major Canadian bank. And I thought, wow, how does he even get to that state at that at this age, right? So sorry, uh, Sheila. I agree with what you said, but one part, I'm not that young anymore. So, <laughs> well, to me, you are. That's the thing, right? So, but right. you know, when you're when you have that that state or that status in bank, like you know, you oversee millions of dollars for all these high profile people. To me, that would be just a scary thing, all of its on its own. And mm. not not only that, like you know, you have your own business. You own and operate your own financial software business. That is so mind blowing. Like, you know, you're successful in a career and you actually have your own business. Plus, you're busy. You're already busy doing this and you're a new dad to a beautiful baby girl. Only five years right. old, right? So, you yeah, know, how yeah. busy can you be? And but yet you're still successful and you keep on going. Congratulations, Keith. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Dean. Thank you so much for both of you for joining us tonight. Um, and I guess our, you know, just to jump right into the topic is what we wanted to delve into is the current state of affairs you know we're down into our fifth week or so of our lack of this lockdown due to this covid health crisis and you know the, the on our uh, ontario government declared it as a state of emergency at that time mm -hmm. and you know it's um uh, if you were you, your job, or your business was not deemed an essential service then we were already you know stayed as uh, told to stay home and flatten the curve, right? So I'm hoping that everybody has been, you know, sort of adhering to that, uh, um, to that uh, uh, sort of like, you know, state and saying that we stay at home to try and keep everybody else safe. And, you know, we were hoping that, you know, we would be able to be, um, to be back out there and, you know, having a real life again at the one, mark, one month mark. But, you know, unfortunately, we just heard really recently on the news just in the last night or so that you know if we're lucky then we should see May 12th as you know something that we're going to start you know with the businesses opening again and trying to restart the economy right mm -hmm. but May 12th is still another couple of months a couple of weeks away and yeah. of course you know we still don't know the state of affairs so That's right. let's start with Jimmy what do you what is your take on you know the Canadian economy at this time? Okay, so for, first of all, I just want to give my condolences to everybody who has been impacted by the COVID-19 uh, situation or crisis. Um, I like to refer it to as a war. It's actually a war, we're at war with an invisible enemy, okay? And uh, in, at least in my lifetime, I've never seen anything like this. And I'm sure in, in a lot of people's lifetimes, you know, there hasn't been anything as severe as this, um, I would say, since like the Spanish flu in like 1912 or 1918, right, during the First World War. So uh you know uh sars was was bad but it wasn't like it wasn't like to this state right as as far as i can remember um you know the economy right now is is in shambles uh, a lot of people have lost their jobs so you know uh, my condolences to every everyone out there who has been affected by the crisis i'm sure we all have but uh more to the people who have either lost their jobs or are financially you know in in, in need of help and um those who have uh, who have uh loved ones who have been impacted by this um yeah it's it's a very tough time right now um to go through uh you know i never imagined this happening and i think uh on the news today actually 
you know, I'm not going to go into the details of what happened. I'm sure everybody already knows, you know, we're all locked at home. So uh, one of the things, you know, I've been following news every day and, uh, you know, Trudeau announced actually another um, a benefit relief fund, right? And, uh, you know, in, in, in upwards of, of billions and billions uh, in the U.S., I know it's in trillions of, of dollars um, that they're injecting into the economy. Um, have, has anyone really thought about, like, where this money is coming from? Like, how, how is this, where does this money come from, right? Like, they don't make money out of there. And I, I, and I think this is something that I want to address is that this, is, this money is, is really being printed, right? So the government is actually... Uh, issuing bonds to themselves and uh, they're printing money, um, you know, new money to, to put, to inject into the economy because, you know, how else would we get through this time? Um, but I think there's a, there's a huge impact to this as well um, because, you know, there's always pros and cons to everything, right? You can't just print money and, and not have it impact the, the economy because, um, you know, even though I'm I, I'm I'm not a financial expert at this, but you know I've done I, I do a lot of investments, uh, uh, especially in the financial markets, and you know I do a little and I know a little bit about economy, so so I know that this is not a, a good thing. I mean, short run it does stop stop the bleeding for those people who are either small business owners, either in in the retail, the traditional brick and mortar, or you know people who are being kicked out of their house and they're applying for for additional income, but. But definitely in the long run, this is going to into impact the economy with all this money, right? Which is something called inflation or, or hyperinflation, which could cause, um, you know, serious, serious uh, problems to the economy down the line. So, you know, as you mentioned, Sheila, like we don't know where this is going. And really, uh, we don't know if it's going to be another three months or another six months. Or, you know, in my projection, this is just the first wave. There could be more of this, right? And um, from what I've seen, the testing isn't there to ke keep up with uh, the demand, right? Um, I have personally had people who have who had uh, symptoms who have gone to the hospitals and uh, are being refused to be tested by the hospitals. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, twelve-year-olds, ten-year-olds, right? Teenagers to to adults. People are being refused. Uh, uh, the hospitals are refusing to test unless they are sure that you need to be tested. Right, which shouldn't be the case. Like at this point, everybody, if you're sick and you're entering a hospital, you should you need to be tested, right? But they're they're being rejected out of hospitals. So you know it's it's very worrisome. Like the current numbers, I, I don't believe it reflects what the actual state of the current situation is. I think it's a lot worse than what it is. So I see it being more than just May 16th, right? I think May 16th, they're just saying that number that date out there, but in two three Agree. weeks. Yep. This problem totally. is not being solved in two to three weeks. Right, this is not longer. Yeah, much longer. It's going to go at least for the summer. You know, at least three, six, six months. At least for the rest of this, this year, I would imagine. Like this is still going to happen. Like this thing is still going to spread. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a lot worse than 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 what people think it it actually is, and it has a huge impact um, in terms of financials to the economy and 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 uh, not only to businesses but to, to people as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my 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 initial take on on the current situation. Yeah, just to add on what Jimmy said, um, I think right now it's 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 on everybody's mind. When can we restart, reopen e the economy? Because uh, as <clears throat> if the, this situation keeps drag on, they're gonna cause a lot of uh, severe damage damages. You no, know? uh, it's always uh, for the for the government uh, policymakers always a tough choice in terms of balancing saving lives and saving uh, economy. You know. Um, it's it's always a tough tough choice. So just uh, uh, Jimmy said, uh, in terms of the length of this uh, lockdown. So uh, I agree, it's going to be a lot longer than people think. Uh, even it's going to be uh, opening uh, sooner or later, but it's going to be a gradual opening. It's not like uh, all of a sudden everybody's lives go back to normal. It's not going to be that case. Uh, so I read a bit of news on, on, on the internet. I think there's three conditions have to be met to make sure so the economy can be completely reopened. Uh, so the first thing is the vaccine, right? That's the thing we definitely need to help our immune system so it can be 
uh, uh, sheltered from the damaging impact of this virus, right? But uh, I saw the news today. It looks like uh, they, they had something promising in the last couple of weeks, and then they end up with something inconclusive results. So that looks like uh, we're still going to wait a few months to get this vaccine on the market. Uh, but also, <clears throat> Um, just look at the South Korea as an example, right? That country has never been officially locked down, but that, con that country has been dealing with this virus very well. So I think these two conditions are very important. One of them, uh, Jimmy just mentioned, it's about the testing. It's ha we definitely have to have a massive testing, right? Uh, because uh, just Jimmy said, uh, a lot of uh, time, a lot of time, those uh, you know, virus transmission is asymptomatic. As, 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 as symptomatic. So symptomatic, people yeah. kind of pass uh, pass on the virus. They don't know even they have a virus on them on themselves. So if you have the testing now, we have, everybody can know can be sure. Uh, do I have the virus, or do uh, or, or some people around me do they have the virus? Right. So if somebody has the virus we can isolate them so that everybody can still go on the street, you know, shopping, working, without worrying about people around us are the, are the dangerous, potentially dangerous to us or not, right? And then the second, uh, the third condition we de definitely need is about the, the mass of the contact tracking. I know this is a bit of a controversial topic that a lot of people think they're going to invade our, you know, privacy. You know, we don't want the people to know where we're being or who do we talk to, but with that technology, that's going to be a huge benefit because, let's say, if we, uh, if I, I have been diagnosed with, with virus, and then uh, the, the, the 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 tracking system can help to find, in the last few hours, who did I talk to, and they can quickly track to track down to those people, and then tell tell them, hey, he got the virus. You you, you guys should probably get some testing, or uh, be quarantined, right? So so we kind of just isolate a smug group of people so that the the rest of the economy can can be on their own, be back to normal. So you know, with regards to um, the economy, of course, right? Um, but part of our huge economy is how do we get um, going again? But mm -hmm. underlying it all is, you know, spending is inevitable. Whether we're in a depression or whether we're on lockdown, you know, we all have to spend money. And, I'm, you know, personally, I've always had like two jobs, if not three jobs, and I've always found it even difficult at that time to save money. So with this current state of affairs, you know, he, do you have any suggestions where you can, you know, just... Um, discuss with us and let us know what your suggestions are for a regular family who has bills to pay. You know, many of us have either rent to pay or mortgage to pay. Of course, you know, uh, the related bills that we have and, and to put food on the table. You know, how is it that in this state of economy, um, you know, where jobs are scarce even, how can we save money? And exactly. That, that's a great question. I think that's a, it's a... Uh, other than our own personal health, that's probably not, should be the number one issue on everybody's mind. You know, we keep our uh, personal finance in order. So in this particular situation, uh, uh, so uh, I was, I was, as we heard, as a lot of people have lost their jobs, lost their income, whether it's, you know, from the business, from investing or from their full time job. Uh, that's very unfortunate. And I know government is trying to pump in. Uh, a lot of money into the system, just like Jimmy said, it's just simply printing money, adding some digits into you know everybody's bank account. That's essentially what they're doing. Uh, but that's really limited help, right? If you look at a CERB, uh, it's about, it's about a two thousand dollars per family uh, on a, on a monthly basis. That's not really a lot. If you have a huge uh, bills to pay. It depends on where they are, especially if it's a debt related, like mortgages, like those things. Uh, it's pretty. Uh, uh, it's a dangerous situation because uh, you know debt has its a benefit. You know it can help us to afford a lot of things, but also has some financial leverage, can sort of enhance our investment return. That's the good side of it about debt. But the bad part is it's because it fixed, it's a fixed, sort of a fixed expense in our daily life, right? It's a stipulated uh, amount that had to be paid at a, at a specific time. If we miss the payment, they're going to be uh, going to hurt our credit rating. And then we, if we stop paying uh, those expenses, and it will also come with the accrued interest, right? And then the interest upon interest, that's called a compound interest. Eventually, it's going to run like a runaway. It will never catch up. So yeah, in this kind of situation, it's really important to remember that the cash is is king, right? So you don't need a lot of cash. You don't have to hoard cash, but definitely uh, 
every family has to build up their emergency uh, funds. You know, there's a lot of ideas uh, out there, like uh, some financial gurus, personal finance experts, they typically uh, recommend every family has about six to 12 month emerging funds in place. Uh, just say if you, if you, one of your family members or even both of the family members have lost a job, uh, they can still live by, uh, get, get by, you know, for the next six to months. So you don't have a lot of pressure. But on the other side, the saving side definitely, uh, uh, she, you, you touch on a very important point. Uh, so at this particular uh, period, we have to be careful what we spend on, right? For the luxury items, we don't need to spend. We definitely had to cut it down. So it's sort of a way running the household, just like a business. We have to separate the things, what the things we need and what the things we want. We have to be very clear about that. For the things we want, just put it on our side. Maybe once uh, this is over, you have extra discretion in income, you can come back and revisit, but definitely you just keep the things you really need to buy. Um, and also, you know, online shopping has become very, uh, uh, a, a huge uh, success actually, uh, and unfortunately environment. Uh, but definitely uh, there's lots of benefit in that because you can definitely do lots of shopping around uh, save money. Uh, it's convenience. You don't have to go out and, you know, danger, uh, put yourself in danger to catch virus. Um, but uh, I think, uh, you know, some, some people have to realize that a uh, dollar saved is a two dollars earned. Right. So, so think about that way. If you if you can save a dollar, you basically have to earn two dollars from your job income to uh to eventually earn this one dollar is because of tax, right? So, uh, just think about it. So, if if I am buying something, let's say I just had a baby a few months ago, and then uh, at the time I was uh, th considering sh uh, shopping for uh, a stroller, baby stroller. You know, it can't go very expensive. You know, like a uh, upper baby that kind of premium brand it usually costs about like two thousand dollars without a car seat, right? Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of money. But uh, so, so my wife, my wife Joyce, she did the, the online shopping. She, she went to the uh, Bed and Bath Beyond, and she did the, some online reviews. She, she found a different brand. It's not a well-known brand, but the, you know, according to online uh, the reviews, it's the same quality as Upper Baby, and only costs us like eight hundred dollars. So. On this one particular transaction, we save twelve hundred dollars. So if we so to 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 get this twelve hundred dollars, I have to earn twenty four hundred dollars from my job income to pay pay for that. Wow. Right? That that's not easy. I think about it, it's not easy to get the, uh, to earn twenty four hundred dollars. You probably have to work overtime. Uh, on the weekend to earn that twenty four hundred dollars, but uh, you know my wife just can de uh, spend a few couple hours on the internet, uh, did online shopping, and then we uh, we actually essentially we make an additional twenty four hundred dollars. So th that's a great deal. So just you know think about that. Wow. So so part of your bills that you have to pay obviously is the cost of you know having internet in your home, and that was definitely something well spent on, right? So that's right. That's right. Because <laughs> it became yep. a tool, not just you know um, communication or something, mm -hmm. right? So and not yep. just for entertainment anymore. So no. how how about you, Jimmy? Um, yep. uh, you know, with re regards to you being a business owner plus you're an investor, you know, um, where would you say that some of us can start? with um, saving more money? Great question. So so a lot of the points I agree with uh, Key, I think, uh, you know, when he was talking about online shopping, one of the platforms that I actually partner with is an online retailing platform um, through shop.com, where we actually help people through shopping save money, right? Which is a great way. And I, I've seen tremendous growth in that, in, in that area. Uh, one of the other things is also in, um, in, well, for, first of all, let's, let me just say that um, the first thing that you should be saving is, is your health, right? So you, you, you should definitely be investing. And one of the first things you need to invest in is definitely your health. So other than uh, the, the money side of it, right, you need to look at health. And I think, uh, you know, I've been attending a lot of talks on health and nutrition, especially with the whole COVID-19 situation. And I think one of the key things that everyone should be, should be taking is vitamin C. Okay, it's not, I know it sounds very simple, but... Vitamin C and vitamin K two D three is is two of the products that I've been personally taking, and I, I've read a lot of uh, 
a lot of positive things on these products, especially, again, I'm not a doctor, but I'm saying these are great things that you should be taking um, for your health in, in the current state with the COVID-19 situation to help boost your immune system and, and to prevent uh, uh, any, any type of disease. Okay, so that's number one. The second thing is, is talking about expenses. So before we're talking about how to make extra money, um, he is exactly right, is that you need to learn how to save money that's coming in, right? That's extremely important. So it starts with uh, off with looking at your finances, so your expenses that, that, that go out every month. So uh, what I would do is go through all of my credit cards, you know, on, on my checking accounts, and then just take a look at uh, what, where are you spending money, right? So you'll be surprised. Um, sometimes to see where you're spending money, but exactly like he mentioned, you need to be spending money on on you know magazine subscriptions or you know Netflix. Like, is there is there things that you can do without, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I would look at is looking at your expenses to understand uh, where your money is going out. So for me personally, you know, I I, I have uh, I have a couple of cars. Like, do I really need all these cars now that I can't go out, right? So the answer is probably not. So what I did was I called up my insurance company and said. Hey, I'm not driving these cars anymore. So can you uh, can you pause the insurance on these cars? Right, that's savings right there. And that's and and, and like like he was saying, it's it's not just th those amount that you're saving, but it's also uh, the m amount multiplied by the number of, number of tax that you would have otherwise had to pay to earn that. Right, so it's almost double what you're saving. So you know you can look at that. You can look at uh, any additional fees that you're paying. You can look at interest that you're paying. Um, off your loans, so specifically, like if you have any student loans or mortgages or or anything like that, right? Of course, you can you can apply for a deferment uh, deferred payment right now, but this philosophy just should carry you um, even outside of this COVID nineteen situation, okay. right? So looking at that, and um, you know, I'm also working on another opportunity with financial software, a financial software business to help people reduce interest on their loans, potentially saving them hundreds of thousands of dollars um, um, alone right just by just by helping them uh, using 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 some very smart principles which we probably talk about in another zoom cast in more depth but uh, using uh, in principles like uh, interest cancellation and all these principles that can help you basically reduce the amount of debt that you're paying so that's the first thing is, is to look at right so um, the other thing I did was look at uh, some of my mortgages. So I do a lot of real estate investments, right? And I look at my look at my different investments, and I say to myself, you know, now that the interest rates are reduced, right, would it make sense to do a remortgage to get those interest rates even further down than what it currently is? So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Everybody's situation is a little bit different, but I'm just giving you some examples of things that you can do, right? Um, you know, even a 0.5 percent interest. Off of a two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar mortgage, um, over the span of, of of thirty years, that's you know hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars in your pocket that you can save, right? So those are things you need you need to be looking at at, at first, and and really uh, figuring out where you can spend the money and where not. The other thing I would say is looking at your ex, um, how how you move money, right? People think money is just you know, your, your, your income that comes in and then your expenses that go out, your income comes in, comes into a checking account and then the money and then, and then minus everything that you expense, right? Your expenses and then anything left, left over, we call that savings, right? And then that goes into like your, some sort of savings account. But really that's not the principle of how you should be saving. Okay. That's basic. That's the basic, most basic thing that people uh, learn to do. Right. But that's not actually the right way. Okay, there's a better way, and I'm here to tell you that there's better ways to do this than than just putting money income into a checking and money going out to a saving, right? And, and there's a lot of ways you can smartly manage your money so that you can save a lot of that interest payment that that's going into either your student loan, credit card, um, you know, really uh, mortgage, right? Whatever that is, right? That can be saving you hundreds of thousands of dollars and helping you pay that uh, back a lot sooner. Isn't isn't that right, Keith? Yeah, absolutely. So we're in the 21st century. Um, but unfortunately, if you come down to the personal finances, a lot of people still sticking, uh, <clears throat> sticking with the old school, you know, pen and pencil, calculator. No, there's definitely a better way to do that. 
so just like Jimmy said, so uh, uh, the, uh, so those uh, those things in theory sounds uh, straightforward, right? You just need to uh, find a way to save money. But in terms of reality, it's it's uh, it's more complicated. Like if you have uh, multiple account statements that uh, or whatever, a lot of things. If you just and uh, <clears throat> not only the the uh, the timing of the payment is different. Uh, there's different banks, different accounts, just to consolidate, consolidate all those information to make a holistic and strategic decision. It's it's like a mind boggling. Like our human brain is definitely not created for that. So we definitely need some technology to help. You know, I, I, I used to use the Excel spreadsheet to help me to mention that. But the thing is, it still requires a lot of manual work, lots of hours. So it usually took me like at least one month. I have to dedicate like almost like eight hours on the weekend just to sort out all my bills and figure out the plan like sort of payment plan for the next uh, th uh, four weeks. I need to make sure on a particular day, at a particular time, I have a specific amount waiting at the bank account to, you know, uh, to pay those bills. Because sometimes they, they do those kind of, it's called a pre-authorized payment uh, arrangement. If you don't have, if you don't have enough money on your bank account, they're going to be, you know, going to be bounced and they're going to come with these, some, uh, some fines that potentially could even affect your credit rating. That, that's no good. Nobody wants that. So definitely we need some help on the, uh, yeah. uh, and by using technology to help us to do that. You'd be surprised Sorry. how much, you, you'd be surprised how much money you can actually save. Uh, exactly. what's, what's the average uh, income, annual income, Sheila, in, in Canada? Is it 50K, 60K? Uh, I think, on the, yeah, it, it, the, the median would probably $50,000, $60,000. Okay, yeah. so and that's, you know, the normal, regular one person, right? Pre -tax. Yeah, pre-tax. Pre -tax. Yeah, and then after tax, probably you know, 30, 40, 30, 000, yeah, right? if you're 30, lucky. 000, right? mm -hmm. so yeah. How high taxes are in Canada. So just imagine this. What if I told you that, you know, just by, like, that and that job is a full time job. You're working forty. Yes, hours, forty right? hours at least. Forty hours. Okay, so it's all about opportunity cost. So if you can figure out, but what if I told you like you can you can save just as much money that you come earn coming in just by spending probably thirty minutes or or an hour, let's say maximum an hour a week versus forty hours a week. Okay, and save yourself the same amount of money that you were going to make that fifty thousand dollars a year. Right? Would that be interesting to you? Absolutely. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Right? absolutely. So a lot of people don't think of it that way, but definitely, you know, there's ways that you can look at your finances and and manage it in so well that you can be, you can even say you're earning forty thousand, fifty thousand, sixty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. right? Just by interest payments alone, if if you were to, if you just knew how to do it, right? So there's there's definitely yeah. things that you can do. Yeah, so there, there's something called the latte effect. You know, latte just like a coffee latte. Um, latte effect. So basically what that means is so people don't pay attention on those small savings, but there's a huge long-term uh, impact on their uh, financial well-being. So uh, there's some calculation I, I found interesting on the internet is if people can save three things in their, in their lives, one is the Starbucks coffee and the bottle of water, and then the third, the third thing I can't remember. The third thing it's, it's some some small oh, uh, dining out. So just uh, you know, yes, it's okay to go out to the restaurant, enjoy some fine fine dining uh, some experience uh, with our lovely ones. But uh, just try don't overdo those things. But if you can save those little small amount of money over time, that actually can uh, uh, contribute. I mean, with compound interest, that could accumulate one point five million dollars to everybody's uh, in fact, investment savings. So think about it. When you reach the age of 65, you have additional 1.5 1. 1. 5 million. 1. 5 million over 40 years. Water and, and dining out. Dining, dining out. out. That's right. That's right. Wow. So think about it. That's, 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 that's a big difference. If you look at the statistic nowadays, over half of the Canadian like retirees over 65, they are have to depend on government subsidies to support their retirement life. That's because, you know, uh, people just sort of uh, didn't save enough money and then they just, you know, was, uh, waste a lot of money on the interest payment on their debt. So eventually when they reach the uh, retirement age, uh, they're sort of a debt free. Yes, I paid off my my houses, my cars. My children have went uh, have gone to school, graduated, got got some jobs. Uh, they can be independent. 
Uh, but now what do I do? I have no saving in my bank account. I probably have another 30 years to, to, to live. And what do I do? Right. That's very, that's a very awkward situation for, for people in that particular situation. Yeah, and honestly, um, you know, depending on the job that they held, um, they probably won't get too much of that pension either. I think we top line out of you yeah. know getting the OAS and the CPP at maybe twelve hundred dollars every month, right? right. Um, and that's from holding a decent job. But mm-hmm. if you haven't um, had the time to put into that, or if your job <laughs> really wasn't uh, higher enough paying that you right. can contribute as much, then yeah. you easily could only be making maybe six or seven hundred dollars um, from those. Uh, resources right and that's yeah so, that's the ideal situation too right like if yes. you're working 35 40 years for somebody else yeah. and then, you, know, you start how i call it the 45 year plan right you start from the age of 20 25 you work 45 years for somebody else retire at the age of 65 and you realize that you're dead broke because you know you follow what everybody else did right yeah, yeah so uh because uh if you look at my uh, i got this experience from uh from my career because I'm dealing with the compensation issues, so I know know about this. And uh, it's sometimes it's not obvious to people out there. Is our pension system have gone through a, 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 a complete? It's completely different than 30 years ago. You know, it's like uh, baby boomers. They used to get something called a defined benefit plan. So that means uh, our parents' generation they work for a company for their whole life. Uh, in return, the company uh, usually guarantee there's a, a pension income. Uh, just paying them this uh, fixed amount, a guaranteed amount, just pay them every month, every year until the day they die, right? So, but nowadays, our generation don't get that. People don't realize what they're missing. So instead, the company switched to something uh, less risky, less uh, costly vehicle called defined contribution plan. So what that means is uh, similar to uh, what Sheila just said. So the company going to take out uh, a portion of money from our paycheck and put it into this um, investment vehicle, usually just like mutual funds, and uh, subject to the the volatility of the stock market. So here's the catch. So that, that means they don't guarantee any amount at the time when we retire. So just think about at the current uh, situation. So the stock market has fallen about uh, 30% uh, since the beginning of this year. So think about now you're retiring. You now you have although you have tried, tried your best to save up a bit of money in the past, in the last 45 years, and now the, the financial market crash. So that means you just lost 30% of your money right away, wow. right? So you're, you're now you're in, the, uh, in a very awkward situation. Now, if you want to cash out investment um, the savings, once as soon as you cash out, they're going to lock in the losses. That means you will never get back those 30% of your savings. But you're retiring, you need money, uh, so now we're kind of, kind of in the dilemma. Should I get the money out or should I keep the money in? Right. So that's, uh, that's very awkward. Oh, yeah. wow. That's exactly what happened to me, T. So, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I was holding a, a, a full-time job, right? And uh, when you're holding a full-time job, exactly you mentioned there's something called DCP, right? Direct uh, Defined Contribution. And you contribute, you contribute and they match you. So it's not guaranteed money when you retire. Right, and it yep. went into the market, and the markets. What happened to the market the last three months? Right, thirty yep. percent drop. So what does that mean? It means I lost thirty percent of the money that I put in that was supposed to grow. Right mm-hmm. now, it's, now it's set back. Uh, you know, thirty percent is probably it took probably five to ten years to accumulate thirty percent of, of growth. Right? Absolutely, getting, yep. getting average six percent on the market a year is is like amazing, amazing. Six mm-hmm. percent a year. Well, you know, that's that's five ten years worth of savings. That was gone. That was wiped out in mm. three months. That's oh, right. Wow. Ten years of yep. savings wiped out in, in three months. Wow. So. Yeah, so some people, uh, uh, Jimmy, like you and I, like Sheila, people probably will have already realized this situation, but a lot of people haven't, uh, don't realize this situation. So this is like a, a boiling frog, those kind of environments. So people kind of uh, stay complacent, just, you know, uh, try to enjoy their life, take it easy. But when they reach the age 65, that's kind of too late to fix this issue. But for so, for those people, they do, they definitely, you can see the statistic from our tax office authority, you can see the entrepreneurship is on the rise because people know just simply depend uh, on their job income to fund their retirement. That's almost 
probably uh, chances of you, you make it gonna be less than fifty percent. So definitely need people need some like a multiple source income to build up the savings, uh, so that they have enough money to retire to depend on uh, later on. Thanks, Guy, and that was actually my next point to try and bring us around to seeing if, you know, um, both of you are very, very successful. You both own your own business as it is, and you've helped so many people. That's even more impressive to me. So what are the options now? You know, why uh, or how is it that you think that each of us or anybody else can actually make more money? Because jobs are scarce, right? Mm -hmm. And as I said, I at one point held three jobs just to try and, you know, get a little bit ahead. And I knew that it was working smart, but there has to be a way to work smarter, right? So, um, Key, can you give me a take on that? Yeah, so um, um, it's, that's, that's an interesting topic, particularly in this environment, because um, our economy is going through a dramatic uh, changes right now. Um, uh, so... So even after we we reopen the economy, so that's gonna the the economy gonna look totally different than what it used to be. So uh, people, so there might be a bad news to to a lot of people. Just you know, a lot of jobs gonna be destroyed through this process, and particularly the longer uh, the, the the we're waiting, we're locked down. Uh, so the, the, this this is called the creative destruction. So it's a sort of a uh, a fancy term by the invented by economists. E- economists. Uh, so so let's kind of it's a, a lot of people in the precarious situation. So people have to be aware of what the trends are going right. So uh, right now, almost sort of a, every industry is shut down. Uh, switch to online, so you probably uh, you can guess what's going to be the next uh, big biggest trend in our economy. Going to be the online, the technology related uh, sort of services. You know, uh, just or if you look uh, go to the mall, you probably now you can even go to the mall because uh, the, the doors are closed. But still, online shopping is doing very well. Like Amazon, they're hiring hundreds of thousands of people. You know, and all those uh, shipping companies supporting the online shopping is also doing very well. So, uh, so I think people right now still need to sort of step step back, look at the re-examine their career, re-examine their career goals or financial goals, uh, and then look at the, the trends. Let's see where the trend is going, and then look at yourself. Like, what kind of skills you have? What kind of knowledge you have? Can you? Uh, uh, are you are you are you positioned very well? You know. Uh, you're, you're in front of a trend instead of, you know, behind this trend. That's very important. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so, Jimmy, I mean, like, you've owned your own business since you were 25. That's, like, really, really young. And you were already helping so many people. And I'm one of them, you know, that you've you've helped. And, and it, it's, you know, hats off to you for helping so many people. And I'm sure, you know, he can say the same thing, you know, um, having had um, direct help from Jimmy, right? So what are you? What would you suggest are are options available to make more money during this crisis time? Yeah, that's 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 a great question. So I think first and foremost, um, there's three things. So this is just my my opinion of how you need to look at things. So there's there's three things that you need to look at. Um, you know, when you when you're talking about making money. So number one key already mentioned is you need to follow the trend, right? As 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 uh, technology, Amazon, online retail. Um, those are huge, huge trends that have been growing the past five, ten years. But even now, you really see these companies shine when there's a, a crisis like this, right? So if you look at Amazon, Amazon stock is at an all-time high today, okay? All-time high. Um, if you look at companies like Zoom, right, which is with the yeah. platform that we're, we're using right now, right? Look how much uh, that company has skyrocketed in the last uh, month and a half. Six times I checked. Six <laughs> times. Wow. Six times. Six times. Okay. Six times. Six hundred percent. So mm. from an investment. So so I look at it multiple ways, right? You got to figure out how to make multiple streams of income. That's number two. Okay. You got to look at the trends. You got to understand that you can't rely on what you traditionally do, which is a forty-five year plan, right? Uh, Twenty, like, like I mentioned, graduate twenty twenty-five, work. Um, 45 years for somebody else and expect to retire wealthy or expect to retire rich, right? Which is what people tell you, get a good job. Like I had a decent job, right? I have a decent job and, you know, made very good money, but, you know, a job's still a job, right? You got to understand that. So that's only one stream of income. 
right? Because you never know, right? The company have no loyalty these days. You never know what's going to happen to your job, if anything. So you got to look at what else can you do, right? Because that's just what I call kind of like quick money, right? It comes in kind of, you know, it comes in every week. It uh, doesn't really change, right? You can't make a lot more. You can't make a lot less. It just comes in, you know, every week based off an hourly or annual salary, right? But you also have to look at other ways, right? So um, uh, you need to divide your attention into uh, either investments. So so for me, I can tell you what I do. And then, you know, hopefully that helps you. But what I do is I, 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 I kind of divide my attention into a couple of things. So uh, first, you know, you need to have a stable income to start, get you going, build you off the ground, right? Get some experience, build you off the ground. Then you start kind of looking at other opportunities. It may or may not be in your field of work, but you got to identify what's the trend, right? It's not about what you're particularly good at. Uh, it's about what people uh, need. So you have to identify on the marketplace. I actually read this really good book that I was, I, I'm going to recommend to everybody uh, that I just recently read this week. It's called uh, This is Marketing okay, by Seth Godin, okay, G-O-D-I-N. Uh, a great book on marketing and, 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 and helps you really build that mentality of what marketing is. It's, just, it's not just advertising, it's about understanding what your customers need. So you, you, you identify a, a need, right, and a trend, and then you follow that trend and you learn and you grow from that trend, right? So for me, I, I kind of split my income into multiple streams. I do real estate investments, um, financial markets, right? Uh, these are topics that I, we're not going to cover everything today, but this is something hopefully we can cover in a future Zoom cast in more detail, right? Uh, do financial software to help people, as I mentioned before, right? Financial software to help people, financial software and algorithms to help people reduce interest on their debt, right? Um, looking into starting an IT online training. Uh, online retail is big right now. Online retail is huge. Um, and then we have um, uh, 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 digital solutions to help uh, businesses move online as well, right? Because you think about brick and mortar stores, these stores are they're, they're dying right now, right? They're dying. They can they're 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 not even getting the funding. And the other thing I was going to mention, I didn't mention earlier, is you know you can get apply for all this government assistance, but like I said, this is just the government printing money, right? The money needs to be paid back. Okay, it isn't just they print money and then that's the end of the story, right? Guess who's going to pay that money back? Us. You Some are. Taxes. We yeah. are. We're gonna we're gonna because they're making the money come out right now. So everybody's, you know, they're like, oh yeah, the government's helping us, this is great and everything. Guess what? Okay, there's gonna be a point in time, sometime down the road, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but a year from now, two years from now, this money needs to be paid back, okay? And it's gonna come out of whose pockets? The people, right? The citizens. So the money has to come back out of our pocket in the forms of maybe taxes, right? Or, 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 or GST or whatever it is, right? Like there's different ways they can do this to tax the people and get the money back so that they can pay off the loans that the government borrowed, okay? So, so even worse, just understand, you're just borrowing money from yourself, exactly. right? It's borrowing. our money from the future. You're, you're taking money out of your left pocket and then putting it into your right pocket. This is what it is, okay? And we pay interest on that. And then you pay, and then you pay interest on that and then you get taxed, okay? That's right. That's crazy, you're, you're at, like, you're, you gotta figure out, and, that, and that's another topic that we have down the road is, is you know, there's so much to talk about, Like When you're talking about business, you know, yep. it's more than just uh, a, a selling a product or service, right? There's a lot yep. of things that go behind into it um, as well. And, and taxes is a huge one as well. So, you know, we're going to have a feature guest on a, on a future Zoom cast to talk about taxes as well, a, a tax expert, right, to talk about taxes. Um, but, uh, you know, as I go, going back to what I was talking about, right? So, you know, we're building digital solutions, helping people build small to medium businesses, uh, building web platforms. Uh, doing digital marketing, so those those are huge, huge trends right now, and, and all businesses are are headed in in that direction. Okay, so um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different ways you can, you know, there's really a lot of ways you can make money, especially when you're at home these days, right? There's a lot of platforms and things you can leverage, um, as long as you're willing to learn, right? There's a lot of things you can do, and and, and having an open mind and looking into these different things. Uh, you know, these are all like each one of these things I talked about are different ventures that I'm exploring or that I'm working in. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are, are, are doing extremely well. So, you know, I'd like to share more details with you guys on that on a future on a future Zoom cast and, you know, help out as many people as I can. Um, you know, I, I, I've had the pleasure and privilege of having a lot of successful people um, teach me in, in my lifetime. So, you know, looking to pay it forward and and looking
looking for the next one. Perfect. Thank you guys. This has been awesome. It, the information is just invaluable, even like, you know, for me and I don't, I'm not a huge finance person. I mean, like I see a lot of numbers um, because I'm in bookkeeping too, but um, when it, when it, it, this whole situation has hit so many people so close to us and ourselves really, right. And it's good to get um, more insight and more information just so that we can try and weather the storm. And this is a great way to be able to weather it together. I thank both of you for, um, you know, doing this with me, uh, trying to pay it forward in some way. And I know that there must have been a couple of takeaways that everybody has from tonight. And I certainly hope that everybody will join us and, you know, um, just uh, ask the person who invited you tonight um, to um, have your information updated because we plan to have a few more of these episodes because the at least for Jimmy and myself, we really truly believe that paying it forward with the information that we have and we hold, you know, only can come back around to help everybody else and it's good for everybody. So if we can just work together and weather, weather this storm, I think it's truly worth it. And I'd like um, just to extend the invitation to everybody to just join us um, probably uh, in next week, if not in two weeks, and we will make sure that the word gets out as to what our next topic will be. So we will see you in a week or so, okay? Have a good Good weekend. Have a good night. And everybody, please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Have, a good night. Have a good weekend.